She-Hulk, issue number three, or as I'm calling this book, somebody at Marvel has a hard-on for Jack of Hearts. I don't understand it. I, I mean, the character's cute. Is it because everybody working at Marvel now has been a fan of anime? And Jack of Hearts can just be perceived as like the down-on-his-luck anime character with all that power not doing anything? It's weird. I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, <laughs> everyone's writing Jack of Hearts. This book is just about Jack of Hearts. I don't really like it. It's a fine She-Hulk comic book when it is a She-Hulk comic book, but then, like, half of it's just, let's recap on Jack of Heart a little bit more. Oh boy, <laughs> there's so much of that going on here. So we open up this book, we're in the law offices of Mallory Book, and she is telling Jennifer, you gotta get your life together, start getting some clients, if you're not in our Rolodex, we'll put you in our ad automated system, we'll get Andy to do it. We meet Andy. He's a former minion of the Mad Thinker, a big blockhead, a boy in a suit, and he knows Jen, and they hang out, and they're talking, and they're having a great time. A couple hours later, Jen starts to realize, okay, so I don't think I'm going to find any clients because everybody I know is a hero, and then they don't want somebody who works for heroes, and Mallory doesn't want me to work with heroes or super types. So she gets a call from Ben Grimm, because he's being summoned because he was walking Lockjaw and he didn't put Lockjaw on a leash and he has to go to court because he didn't have his dog on a leash when it took a piss somewhere. It's kind of funny. Then she gets another call from Pietro. He got a speeding ticket. And that's funny. That's the stuff this book should be. <laughs> like, it's good. It's like, yeah, Ben Grimm doesn't want to put his dog on a leash. Pietro's got a speeding ticket for going too fast. Now Jennifer's in a state of her life where she can't be working with superpowered people, yet she still is. That's a fun story. I really dig that. I think it's really cool and interesting, and it's taking a chance of this character that it needs, because that's what this show should feel like. That's what this character should feel like. I've said it every issue. I'm going to say it again. This book needs to feel like and just like that when our Sex and the City girls are coming back together in their older time. You know, they had their fun rompous years. They did all their amazing stuff. Now they're coming back to get their life sorted out. And that's what the beginning part of this book felt like. It was funny. It was creative. It was genius. And then... We retread the ground we retread in the last issue. Jack of Hearts is back. Instead of solving any problems as to why he's here or what's going on, we refill everybody in on the information of who he is and why he's here. We talk about his origin, why he looks the way he does, where he's from, what's got a part of him, what his powers do, who he is, all that stuff. We reiterate it for like 10 pages of this book. If that's not what we did in the last issue, it is. We did that in the last issue. I get it. You want to set Jack up as like the unlikely romantic lead. I get that. But what is with this big shroud of mystery as to how he got back if we're going to spend the same two issues talking about exactly why he's here? It doesn't add anything. and It's just like the tension of like, hey, I don't know why I'm here. Things are different now. I can suddenly eat food. That's cool. Didn't we learn all this in the last issue? Didn't we do all that? It's weird. It's not much of anything, honestly. I will say, as much as I don't give a crap about the Jack of Hearts character, there is something cool to be said about him coming back. That's kind of an interesting turn of events. He is drawn cool in here. I do like the artwork in this book a little bit more in previous issues. It's just crisper and cleaner, and Jen looks just a little more, like, perfect in a way where she's supposed to be. There's kind of a cool theme in here where Jen's being, like, positioned back to becoming her old you know sensational self where like all her old clothes are still in the apartment everybody just loves her when she was kind of like the sexualized object it's kind of the push in here and again i think that works really well for the and just like that feeling where it's this older woman remembering who she was in her glory days and everyone else still thinks she was really cool and cool back then but now she's like i can do better than that I, i'm comfortable in myself now i don't have to position myself like that to be treated a certain way i'm comfortable in changing my opinion so then she just talks to patsy walker on the phone and they talk about jack of hearts as if the past couple of pages weren't just about that it feels like we're padding for time for some reason is it because we can't really like do the jack of hearts stuff while reckoning war is going on so we're gonna spend three issues of the she hawk book talking about him is this it is this what people were asking for i know people were clamoring for she hulk to come back to herself i did not like where jennifer was before this book but now this is what we got there's not much going on here it's kind of boring honestly the character is not doing anything that's the part that sucks the most is that she could be doing more but she's not so 
The big problem with this issue was Jack hasn't been able to take off his suit because if he takes off his suit, he could potentially die and explode and kill everybody. The end of the book, he takes off his suit and he's wearing a cute little heart shirt and you know, it's funny. It's like, hey, he's got the heart on his eye, the heart on his shirt. It's funny. It's cute. Look at this sexy anime boy with his raggedly hair hitting on the big green lady. It's very cute, right? It's kind of fun, but it's like this is not much of anything. It is treading water for the most part, and that could be annoying for some people. I, I have a feeling if anybody is a fan of Jack of Hearts, just having him back in this book is enough for you to like justify picking it up. But there's nothing happening. Not even the courtroom stuff is happening. It's just more establishing Jen back in a world where she's, I guess it's supposed to be like mundane where she's like, she comes home when her boyfriend can't remember what he's up to. And she's talking to her friends like, we should go out more. She's like, I can't do that. My hide, my, no, my glory days are behind me. That's something, but it's not doing it in a worthwhile way. And everything we're seeing is just mediocre and not as special or interesting as I'd like it to. Once again, I have to say this about the book. Jen Bartle's covers are phenomenal and one of the main selling points for me. Oh, I could just hang these up in a frame and just look at them all day. I love it. But yeah, it's just a standard book that treads water so much for a character that doesn't need this much explaining. I don't know. I don't know what's going on in the She-Hulk book, but I'm not sold. I'm not that impressed. But hey... I don't know. Maybe other people are liking it. I haven't seen the discourse about it online. It is kind of cute. It is kind of fun. Other than the fact that this issue is a repeat of last issue, it looks pretty good. Gotta say that's a positive. So She-Hulk, issue number three. I'm going to give a five out of ten. Now, thank you guys for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. As always, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.